shut up. No, you shut up. <laughs> no. Uh, my children what? made fun of me and my feelings are hurt. Whatever. You have no feelings. Folks, it's Tuesday night. Welcome to Between the Rolls. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're new here, uh, hang on. We only do this for an hour. We'll only bore the shit out of you for 60 minutes. If you've been here before, you know, uh, hey, these guys might have uh, a snippet of good ideas uh, in between their buffoonery. But, uh, you know, we'll see what we got for you. Uh, let us not forget. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to see here or on Saturday's One Shot, this coming Saturday, uh, M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail, hit us up. Uh, we will get you on there. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. They make custom dice. I don't have any of my stuff here, so uh, we're going rogue. Uh, but if uh, you need some dice that roll well, uh, check them out at Pirate Dog Dice. And of course, uh, oddfishgames.com, makers of adventure sets, so that your game doesn't stink. It can smell successful like ours. Uh, they also have the Shine Project to help you write gooder. And uh, six, seven days, six or seven days away from the uh, launch of their Kickstarter for how to RPG with their cat. Uh, I've played it. I had a great time. I can hardly wait to support it. Uh, that's coming up real soon. Uh, finally, if you're going to Gen Con and have a few spare hours, they can use some booth help. Uh, they will pay you in swag or probably not Benjamins. So let's not... Let's not go high here. I don't pay you. Yes, Kyle. Give me an in. Can I switch the cat with a dog or possibly a toddler? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, 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 I'm I failed, it. Works. <laughs> I failed to see the difference on any of those. Three really items. right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, uh, this is episode 132, but more importantly, this is the last episode of year three we've been doing this shit for three years uh and adventures in phil bar is going on eight starting on saturday but tomorrow is our anniversary so you notice a change in the background change in the wording uh it's going to be three people on between the roles uh just because it goes quick and uh we get a lot more use out of it uh, four, it just kind of bogs down. But anyway, tonight uh, we're going to do two recaps and then we're going to go ahead and do a discussion on underwater uh, scenarios. We will start with me because I am an arrogant SOB and I had uh, the first game on Thursday night, uh, episode 281. 181 episodes. It was a Dragonland scenario run by our own uh, DJ, uh, Dayton. Uh, and he went ahead and ran four of us, uh, myself, uh, our producer, Carrie, uh, Jesse, and Heidi, uh, through an underground uh, kind of tubish delve. Uh, it was set in the Dragonlance uh, milieu, if you will. Uh, I got to play a Dragonborn, a 17-year-old Dragonborn, so I got to play a uh, juvenile asshole. I, I think that's my wheelhouse, actually. It was. You did it well. Don't do yeah. anything you're not comfortable with, Fred. Yeah, I, I've got to, I got to play the jerk. Uh, I played it well. Uh, spoiler alert, 50-50 uh, on the outcome. A uh, couple survived. couple did not. <laughs> uh, the tomb had a trap. Uh, very, very dangerous opponents everyone got the shit kicked out of them uh it was a good time had by all including the two dead individuals not going to spoil it for you you're going to have to watch who they were to, you're going to have to watch to find out who they were and how they died uh hopefully dj was going to run this at murder hobocon uh back on august 1st uh but circumstances dictated that he could not so if you go to in-person cons, he has mentioned he is going to run that again. Hence, uh, very few spoilers. He told us some things post-game uh, that made it a little bit more understandable. Uh, Did he do the usual things of, oh my gosh, that was terrible. <laughs> I'm never running a game for you guys anymore. You're a bunch of murder hobos. 
the yeah, Kyle and I are, are well in tuned with uh, <laughs> doing it the first time. You always suck. Hell, I've done it 200 plus times, and eh, every once in a while, I still botch it. Not really, I'm actually great. Uh, but you know how it is. Uh, Didn't you go long on uh, one of your campaigns here I, recently? I did go long, but you're stealing the thunder from David. So, uh -huh. you rat bastard. Uh, <laughs> and I will blame everybody but myself. Uh, but yes, for episode 281, uh, it was Jesse's, Jesse's it was fault. Jesse's yeah. fault, yeah. Actually, we, we ran long on both. So, fair warning, if you're going to watch Thursday's episode, that baby ran three hours. Uh, the other one ran about 220. So we, we did run a little bit long on both. A lot of action in both, a lot of fun, a lot of shenanigans. I mean, 17 year old, I'm going to be a juvenile. And we all know my fondness for urinating on things. So uh, that I know, Frank, what is that? I, I mark my territory, Dave. Does your uh, wife need help? Just sing a few okay. lyrics of an R. Kelly song, Carrie. Oh okay. no! Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I, like, ah. nope, I met her once. Ah, that was that smell. She still loves Trump. That's your hint. <laughs> so say something that would instantly cue up uh, your friends to know you're in trouble. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Dragonlance adventure was fun. I had hoped to be a gully dwarf or a kender so I could be a dumbass. Instead, I got a 17-year-old and got to be a dumbass. Anyway, uh, I got my hands gooey on Anakeg uh, eggs, uh, but fortunately, I got to wipe them off on Heidi's cape. So all's well that ends well. Uh, and that was episode 281. No spoilers. You got to watch it. Uh, that's all I got for that one, Kyle. You're muted again. You're muted. You're the one who was hosting the first part. Now you're trying to pass it off on me. How that, dare uh, that's you. right. I, I forgot. <laughs> How oh, dare we you. did we did rock, paper, scissors. Did you even introduce audience. anybody at all, including yourself, no. Frank? Well, you know what? If this is your first time here, I'm Jesus. Okay. If this is I not your first Jesus time. I remember Jesus being a drunk redhead, but go on. Yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> well, here I'm wearing kind of sandaly things. <laughs> And I'll just prophetize uh, all night long. Uh, but yes, I, you are correct. I had forgotten about that. Uh, but yes, I, I do not introduce myself. If you don't know who I am, uh, I'm the loudmouth shit starter on uh, Philbar RPG. Uh, if you don't like my political views, don't care. Uh, but here on Murder <laughs> Hobo Inc., uh, I am the primary DM. Uh, I figured I'd let everybody uh, introduce themselves. I think like you started last time. Uh, so as we move to the second offering of the week, David, introduce yourself and uh, tell us uh, about episode 282, please. Okay. Hi, I'm David. Uh, you can follow me on the Twitterverse at dndevious on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I play Ingve in the Calamity campaign a side and crow and b side i'm also zadar and cacophony usually here i'm between the roles and uh yeah you can find me in a one shot every once in a while so that's dave so uh yeah saturday's campaign that would be episode 282 i i guess you could call it the there and back again uh episode but might as well be called Murder on My Mind, because that's all I hear is like Ray Charles in the background. Murder, sweet murder. So David is not a professional singer. No, I am not a professional <laughs> singer. I <laughs> never claim that shit. But you should hear him play the piano. He plays like a blind person. I do. <laughs> With, yeah, yeah. It's bad. It's bad. It's more like a cat, you know, walking across the keyboard. So yeah, I'm getting shot at with a BB gun, you mean? <laughs> nice. Okay, so yeah, Saturday's calamity campaign. Calamity is right because that's what it turned it into. Uh yes. Calamity crew arrives at Bob. Uh the crew arrives at Bob with uh refugees uh from the 
uh, tribe of Peck Pecs that a village that we helped rescue. And we arrived to find Ba is now fortified. It has walls. It has a gate. We try to gain entry and we are quickly halted uh, by guards that know us and will you know, say, you guys, yeah, come in. Everybody else, no. So we're wondering what the hell is up. Uh, secure, <laughs> head of security pushes his way up towards the gate. It is none other than Dolph in fancy armor. So see where that goes. But anyway, it's like Dolph's in charge of security. What the fuck? Anyway. <laughs> So uh, from there, we find out that uh, our leader of our village, uh, <laughs> Isba, has, has died, and Lokai has assumed command. And uh, apparently, there's been more attacks on the village while we were away by these unknown forces to us, but to everybody else, they gave them a name, silliest name in the world, but hey... What else are you going to call them? Because it's what they do. They're called Whompers. You know? <laughs> so uh, as we turn to find out what they are, we'll find that out later in the episode. But uh, I think they are chocolate covered with like malt powder. And delicious. and delicious. I'm not sure about delicious. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I was a kid. I used to. Yeah. Anyway. Wow, uh, a lot. <laughs> You know, they used to come in a big milk container at one time, too, uh -huh. you know. Oh, that's so. good stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Off anyway, uh, yes, we are denied entry with the refugees into the village. So Ingve tries to petition, and the rest of the crew try to petition for the refugees to come into the safety of the village because we find out that they've been attacked. And uh, yeah, that petition is denied. So Ingvi tries to suggest a pathway to citizenship uh, for these refugees. Uh, yeah, that summarily gets turned down. So Ingvi is like, fine, fuck it. Let's uh, you know set up these refugees as comfortably as we can till we can get them inside. Ingvi starts creating Ingve's mud hut, which is essentially like a bunker that goes under <laughs> underground and uh, for shelter for the, the refugees. So they're not out in the open with all these attacks coming. So uh, anyway, with that, okay, the rest of the crew trying to uh, get acclimated to what's going on uh, within the village. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Rakir is just not having it. Uh, he's pretty upset that Gizba has died, that Lokai's in charge, and he really fucking hates Dolph. <laughs> so he tries to petition, uh, seek Ingve's counsel on any kind of vegetation that's poisonous. So, yeah, Rakir gets to making foxglove cocktails. <laughs> so it's cocktail hour for whoever the fuck he's gonna pass it off to. He tries to test it on one of the guards. <laughs> A poor guard who actually caught a dagger in the eye from Dave uh, in his drunken stupor just being Dave. Anyway, uh, as it goes on, uh, Lokai tries to get, um, tells us we must be part of the watch and stuff like that. Ingve stays with the refugees outside uh, during the watch. Uh, Rakir tries to try out one of his foxglove cocktails on poor Joe, and it gets spilled. Uh, also, to add insult to injury, there was, oh, just some kind of disturbance or something like that. They go to investigate. Uh, Azari goes off, off the village over the wall. Uh, Rakir decides to go over the wall, but test how far the wall is by summarily throwing Joe over, but he used him to break his fall. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so uh, the phenomenon that they saw was a ball of fire racing across the sky and suddenly crashing on the other side of the lake. Azari goes to investigate. Rakir goes to investigate. Turns out that uh, with this disturbance that, that has occurred, 
Uh, they also discover the enemy is not far away from the village, or at least one, <coughs> uh, I don't know what you would call them, little cadre of Whompers or whatever. Squad. Squad. A squad. Yeah. A and I like Rakir, Rakir right thinks it's a good idea to make contact with them. <laughs> Didn't work out the way he planned. Uh, shit went down. Uh, Azari thought he should intercede and eventually does uh yeah it gets pretty scary folks and rakir decides to use the opportunity uh to exact justice and uh yeah take somebody out that he's been wanting to take out for a long time <laughs> so uh ingve mm-hmm. comes on the scene with uh a couple of refugees and peck peck uh in tow uh yeah Peck Peck dies mostly thanks to Ingbe's totem and a and a hell of a death save by Frank. Peck Peck lives. So uh yeah. That's so bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So we finally catch up with Rukir, come to find out, yeah, he's eliminated Doff, and that leaves a lot of questions to where the campaign's going to go, and it was funny to see Frank tear up a campaign summary right in the middle of the, at the end of the show. So, we'll you're, you're, missing, you're, where, you're missing a up. huge focal point. I can't mm-hmm. believe you just glossed over it. Whoa. Well, they got to have something to watch. <laughs> Geb's cows have been stolen. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know why Geb. you haven't made a bigger deal of this. Dave is yeah. enraged. Was he really? I mean, he was mostly no, he drunk. got drunk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's enraged, drunk. He didn't that's rage. The same thing. Rage drinking is pretty much what it was. He so. was drinking like a fish, is what it sounds like. I think he me. was already drunk when he got huh? the news. So I don't think it's I don't think it's really set in yet. So. And he had the audience. So, yeah, yeah, he had an audience. He was entertaining. So, yeah. I, I liked him slamming Peck Peck and then the crowd kind of partying and Peck Peck sitting across the way. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a funny episode. You, and that's a funny part of the episode. You really got to watch that. It's hilarious. So, uh, the Calamity crew works great together. And yeah, it's just. Scott, I don't know where you're going with your character, man, but damn, it's a dark <laughs> ride. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tune in uh, the following To Saturday. be fair, nothing one makes you want to be a murder hobo more than one of Frank's campaigns. Oh, yeah. I'm talking those Frank NPCs. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Scott's All gone. I wanted to do was buy a magic bag from you, but you're such right. a dick. <laughs> Let's go back in this alley over here. I, I'm starting to wonder because I suggested Scott's subclass to him, and he's like, "Yeah!" And then here we are. <laughs> so it's like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, so. the the whole one eyed Joe. Because uh, when Scott hands him the poison uh, uh-huh. to drink it, uh, because of the dagger pulling out of his eyeball. Uh, one eye Joe has poor dexterity, and I rolled a three to get it. <laughs> he just knocks it over the wall. Has a drinking like, problem. Scott's like, so well, the whole line was, uh, so I, uh, I've only got the one eye because <laughs> he kept bumping into Scott the whole time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> lesser restoration, yeah, it doesn't work when you're missing an eye, so. Oh man, and I don't have I don't have yeah regenerate yet. So yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. That that was episode uh 282. Both episodes are available both still on Twitch, uh in our video archive on YouTube, as well as our audio only archive if you don't want to uh look at the money makers here. Uh so go ahead and enjoy. Again, fair warning, uh, 281 is three hours and 282 is about 220. So uh, Mm -hmm. it's going to take some effort, but hell, it's no critical role. Those bastards run on forever. So uh, we didn't have a Margu because of the holiday uh, weekend. We will have a Margu this weekend. Again, repeating, if you want to try your luck or if you're a forever DM, we do have a one-shot coming up this Saturday. Uh, 
And that's all I'm going to say about that. If you want to get in on it, uh, we still have space available. Let us know. Mhobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail will get you on there. That is our recaps for the evening, and we will now move on to part two of our evening uh, with Kyle. Kyle, introduce yourself and tell us what we're going to discuss next, please. You forgot to mention Thursday, Cacophony. Cacophony, Cacophony. Possibly the last. That last stages of Cacophony. Yep. This promises to be good. I have to uh, say. <laughs> or not. Or could, yeah, everyone not. just dies. Yeah. yeah, That's the end of it. They look in over the cusp of the volcano and <laughs> it goes off. Yeah, when we throw whatever is in it, it sets off the reaction. Everybody yeah. rolls dexterity and <laughs> they're like Gollum. Three Gollums. Exactly. <laughs> What we didn't right. notice is the minotaurs coming up behind us. <laughs> they are silent on those hooked feet, guys. Let me exactly. just tell you. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Massive man. creatures. Minotaur Very rogues. Quiet. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys, I am Kyle, and I am here to talk about the second part, which is underwater campaigns, one-shots, and gaming in general. And why they chose me is because I run the uh, cred campaign, Cthulhu Rises, Everyone Dies. They're going to be underwater at some point. Let's let's face it, it's going to happen. And of course, I'm going to make them tell me how I'm going to run it. That way, I don't actually have to do anything. I just ask the questions, and it's great. Nice. <laughs> so before uh, uh, we... Uh, oh, no. Everyone's been introduced. I've, I've just introduced myself. Uh, so let's talk about underwater gaming adventuring campaigning all sorts of bits uh and let's really start off with the problem with underwater gaming and why dms are really afraid to tackle that and let's start mm, okay frank is eyeballing me right right in the eye so he wants uh-huh. to go first he's like david's doing that thing where he's the student who doesn't want to raise his hand Oh, what am I looking at over here? What's that outline? Uh, uh, what? 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. Frank, go ahead. Uh, what are some of the issues with underwater gaming that kind of make it a, a, a trepidatious thing for DMs to try and do? Uh, the biggest thing, first and foremost, has got to be breathing underwater. Uh, that, that problem has to be resolved through high-level magic or magic items, uh, or if they all want to be sea elves. Uh, that's fine. Uh, that that would be okay. Uh, but for the most part, we're all heroes of uh, different races, and uh, nobody likes Aquaman. He's stupid. So why would you play a sea elf? Uh, in say that uh, to Jason Momoa's. Face. I was about to say <laughs> his knee is the same size as a thirteen-year-old girl, just like the rest of us. Uh, the the big thing uh, we have run an underwater campaign here on Murder Hobo Inc. Twice, uh, we ran Antiquity uh, way back in year one, uh, and it featured the search for uh, the search of an old city, uh, and it had multiple threats, large city submerged underwater, uh, the kind of ship that you see in all the aquariums that you always wanted to have growing up as a kid. Uh, you know, you want to go to Atlantis, you want to see these cool things. Uh, but fortunately for them, they were all high level because I think we ran that as ninth level. And they all had, uh, I believe, jewelry that allowed them to breathe underwater. Ergo, uh, no problem, they can move on. Now, if you're using potions or spells or that crap kelp out of Harry Potter, uh, you are on a very strict time frame. So you have to be careful with that. That being said, that's kind of a cool thing for a DM because nothing really wrecks the party's enthusiasm like saying, oh, you are having trouble breathing and can no longer fight. (laughs) Uh, You just start plucking PCs out of there and everything uh, turns up roses. Uh, There are a lot of other uh, pitfalls to it. Uh, but that, that is my primary and my uh, happy place is how are you going to breathe underwater, hotshot? Uh, I'll turn it over to David 
for David, another. You got any uh, more? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, just environmental <laughs> hazards too. I mean, that's that's the thing. Wild oil bike, rigs, serene. yeah, <laughs> oil rigs. <laughs> Hi, Boeing. <laughs> 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 I'm from Louisiana. We're kind of bit bitter about that. <laughs> Fuck you, Boeing Petroleum. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, just uh, environmental hazards. <laughs> Kyle's like, oh, we just lost the sponsor. my my wife. Just uh, she, <laughs> I got a text the other day. Hey, do you want to watch this movie that's about the oil rigs down <laughs> Deep the Star street? Rising? <laughs> and I was just like, no, not really. I can tell you all I about got, it. <laughs> she just watched that movie. Got real oh. mad at me because I said I wasn't going to watch it. She she watched it for Marky Mark. We all know why she. Yeah, we it. know. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm sorry. Continue on, David. You got it. <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> that. Uh, okay. Sorry, I'm having a little problem with the gallery right now, and it's driving me nuts. Okay. All right. Quick, so, please our cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, ah. <laughs> okay, now I'm back. <laughs> All right. Uh, underwater hazards. Uh, we were talking mm-hmm. about wildlife, oil rigs, and all that fun stuff. Do you have any more you want to throw out there? Uh, yeah. The, I mean, <clears throat> well, just other things that, you know, as a DM, you could throw at them as a caveat. Temperature things like that, you know, that's another environmental hazard, pressure, you know, yeah, so there's nothing like being in the apparatus of Qualish and you decide to open the hatch. <laughs> so that happens. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things that, that uh, we mentioned in the outline is your battlefield. Your battlefield isn't two-dimensional anymore, or, you know, you now actually have above below forward and back to worry about so you know there's always that too so and um, underwater course, combat you know yeah fireball doesn't work quite as well underwater Mm-mm. electricity no, so, works great <laughs> yeah <laughs> that it does so um uh, yeah yeah i would think i would think air would work well underwater like dust i mean you can use it for propulsion or something like that but if you Possibly. try to push someone away from you and you use gust whoo whoosh it is, you both go. it is both ways mm-hmm. thunder wave oh yeah gosh <laughs> thunder wave would be awesome mm-hmm. that's that is all great and, uh, uh as dms Let's talk a little bit about those problems. Be like, yeah, nice. that, that's a huge list of problems. Another thing they didn't mention is buoyancy or the uh-huh. fact that swimming for eight hours a day is insanely difficult. Uh, oh, yeah. You could probably die if you attempt it. Um, but just making sure that, you know, the paladin in heavy armor is still managing to keep up to the top or, or uh-huh. what's going on there. So, yeah. uh I think uh, let's talk about breathing underwater. That seems the biggest issue right now. How are your players, if we're talking about early levels, how are your players getting the ability to breathe underwater if they don't already have the ability to do so? Harry Potter's kelp. Harry Potter's kelp. I'm so happy you mentioned that because I was driving away from work and I was like, Oh my gosh, we're going to make a Harry Potter reference tonight. Pretty much. You're going to make a lot of them. (laughs) Um, This right here is a good point of reference to use. Ghost of Saltmarsh. David, David, you held up uh, Letters to Penthouse Volume 3. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, had the look, folks. Had the look. Well, oh, you didn't expound on what it was before I knew you were bullshitting. So <laughs> I was like, uh, no, Ghost of Salt Marsh has some great things in it uh, mm-hmm. as far as like, uh, you know, uh, things for breathing, mm-hmm. like uh, Frank had jewelry. One of the things that we used when we did go, uh, Ghost of Salt Marsh is uh, armor. 
armor from the sea elves. Nice. Um, controlled your buoyancy, uh, ability to breathe, ability to move, and stuff like that. So, okay. you know, that, that, that was one of the ways that we overcame it was with that, with the armor. Sure. So. I think uh, my best example I've heard for this, uh, uh, a lungfish, where literally you buy a fish and it goes up your nose and down into your lungs oh. and it converts water to air for you. Uh, and Is that you a have thing go... or you just thought of that up? I've heard it somewhere, but okay. you know, because one of these things we got to do is the underwater is a completely alien space, you know, other than mm -hmm. space itself, underwater is the second final <clears throat> frontier. Right. And so just being able to try and switch something out, you know, oh yeah, you eat this kind of seaweed right here. Oh yeah, talk to these elves. They make special armor to control that. Or just, yeah, there's this random fish that just blows air bubbles as it goes around. And you take that and you swallow it and it will attach itself. Hopefully it goes down the right, right wrong pipe. Because you're either having a delicious dinner and drowning or... <laughs> Or you really right. want to just fine. Exactly. It's like it kind of works like a combi tube, you know, with resuscitation. It's yeah. like oh. how do you get rid of it? <laughs> That's, That's the a fun good question. Part. <laughs> Is it a coat hanger? <laughs> it's a coat hanger. Again, make sure you get it down the wrong pipe or the right pipe. Otherwise, things turn really sour really quick. Or, or it's like uh, you got this this fish tail hanging out of the side of your mouth for the entire campaign. <laughs> and I mean, some of these ideas are maybe a little bit more valid than uh, using water breathing because mm -hmm. you encounter that wizard underwater who can is a sea elf. Let's go with that, mm -hmm. and he just casts a spell magic. And all of a sudden, you're at the bottom of the ocean, all drowning. Yeah, I never thought about that. Because you trusted yeah, your wizard. Spell magic. Yeah. Counter spell. Oh, water breathing. Counter spell. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And it, if you thought counter spelling healing spells was nasty, Big move. <laughs> this is much worse. <laughs> man, oh man. That's funny. You could always uh, 20,000 leagues beneath the sea it, put giant conch shells on you. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, actually, uh, that, that imagery works. Yeah. So. Of course, you're, it's really easy to surprise your ass. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, how are we handling... I guess we're kind of talking about movement. That gives you the swim speed. If you find a swim speed, you can swim around all the time. Um, how are we handling 360 environments? Or are we really doing that? Because when are the players actually exploring open water? Well, if they're going to be swimming like mm -hmm. midway waves to floor, uh, that's the perfect time to introduce uh, lower level encounters uh, in mass. I mean, you know, a swarm of quippers isn't that big of a deal to somebody who's seventh level. Mm -hmm. Four swarms of quippers, eh, that's going to put blood in the water and that's going to attract larger prey. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the 360 environment, you can actually surround them uh, with swarms of quippers or a uh, uh, herd or pod or whatever the hell a group of sh hunter sharks is called. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I don't know. So they can come from both sides, solitary. front and back, up and down, and you're yeah. going to get the shit kicked out of you. You are. Because they're only, they're only CR1s, but there's eight of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So summon... 26 swarms of quippers and they can all completely surround that one PC who had decided to swim out into the open water. And strangle weed. You strangle weed. Oh, oh yeah. 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 That's a beautiful hazard. Because right. they like lungfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh. ah. 
Oh, uh, the Call horror was right my out. thing, Frank. How dare you? I've uh, corrupted kind of, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we kind of talked about how uh, spells are handled underwater. Um, just as a, 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 a quick ruling, how do you guys determine, you know, that obviously a fireball does half damage or maybe just completely and utterly goes out? Or how do you guys handle that? How do you guys handle... Uh, electricity arcing through the water or or thunder waves where you know uh if a grenade goes off you don't actually want to be underwater because your body turns into gelatin and is instantly killed you'd rather be above ground it's on mythbusters check it out mm-hmm. uh so david why not, oh how would you handle spells uh and their odd effects happening underwater I would probably have all fire spells are at disadvantage. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, pretty much that and maybe uh, uh, certain spells like the lesser fire spells be uh, half damage or something like that or just works as like someone who is resistant to fire or something. So, sure. All um, right. Yeah. Frank, what are you doing to players' spells? I'm going to increase the width on lightning and electricity to expand it so that, mm-hmm. uh, because it's touching uh, the same molecular makeup. So I'll go ahead and give that full power uh, and increase the width and or diameter. Now, with Thunder Wave, uh, we discussed this, and yeah, unless you're breaching yourself up against something a rock, a statue, or something like that, uh, you you are also going to fly away. Now, I can see, in order to evade a target, to just kind of cast that down below you and shoot right out of the water. So for evasion purposes, any kind of propulsion or catapult spell uh, would be beneficial. Uh, You're going to do like a submarine breach or something like yeah, that. Let but me that's solve the, the ballast. <laughs> what about pressure? You know? Uh, Ooh, yeah. bend, Rising baby. too fast, sinking too fast. Con check. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Con check. But yeah, I, and, you know, I'm always torn with that because, you know, oh, these are mythical heroes and shit like that doesn't affect them. And nobody ever goes to the bathroom except Frank's characters. Um, <laughs> you know, so the, the pressure I, I could see that maybe take uh oh, I'm trying to think of a low level force spell. Um, maybe maybe just suffer 1d8 every 10 feet. <clears throat> uh I would be more concerned about drowning. Uh and yeah. visual acuity out the window. You yeah. are not gonna be able to see jack shit the deeper you go. So no torches. Light would work nicely. Magic weapons would work nicely. Uh, but Angler fish are really great for lighting up the way. Is that uh, the uh, chandelier looking thing? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Know, it's for, for all you elders, uh, that would be the Duke's limousine from Escape from New York. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. The big uh, chandelier candelabra, candelabras yeah. uh, on the front. Yeah, Isaac Hayes, man. Right. Um, when he wasn't the, hitting the, his wife. The thing, <laughs> the thing about light, though, light's going to attract predators. I mean, you know, like any light source in in the water, you know, in a aquatic environment, light is a draw. So. You know what? Let me throw this one out here because it just stuck in my head for some reason. A giant, a just a, just an aberration of a whale comes by and snatches you up. You and your party members are now Jonah in the whale with several areas to investigate. Uh, all the water drains out, and then you can poke around until it takes another swallow of water. Or shoots up air. Out out the blowhole. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ooh, so that'd be the thing is uh 
writing. I writing. want the He's writing it down. the whale. <laughs> First and oh. foremost, to make that dungeon, because a giant whale is officially a dungeon at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so get its anatomy. You want to be able to get into its stomach is obviously the easy one. Find a way into its heart, but obviously that's going to be the dangerous one because if you kill it, then you could really You're screw gonna things up. You're going to die too. Up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, what's the thing? A, a, a blue whale, a person could actually travel through the, bl- the heart of a blue whale. It's just that big. And that's got to be something the players would want to do. Right. Uh, but the idea is to race your way to the blowhole <laughs> before you get forced into the brown hole. Well, wait. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're either going to be the scuba diver who got shit on by a blue <laughs> whale, Shoot. or you're going to launch yourself out the blowhole. Oh. Oh man, I just keep thinking uh, Hit Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with the whale. <laughs> I, I'm thinking of Tosh when he hijacked the magic bus, which is completely inappropriate. <laughs> I would think, you know, for a whale scenario like that, I mean, you could use an astral juggernaut as kind of like your blueprint for it, pretty much, I would think. Or you can go on dreamstime.com and see whale anatomy stock illustrations. Not that I'm exploring this concept as we chat. No, 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 you're not checking that out. Uh, You got to have some sort of like uh, worms. Like uh, when you... Parasitic worms. Parasitic Parasitic worms. worms. Uh, uh, A stomach ooze, but not very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Some sort of acid ooze kind of thing, because you have to try and travel through that. Bile, uh, yeah. Flooding from when they're scooping krill. So, in plankton, you know, coming in. Kraken versus whale fight. That could be the climax of it. That's somewhere along the lines. And it's just like, yeah, you can either just completely abandon this creature to be eaten by a whale as a big, screw you for eating us, you deserve that. Or you can be like... It's a, such a majestic creature. We've got to save it somehow. Mm-hmm. How about yep. if it's not a real whale and it is a manifestation of maybe it's a lich's phylactery? Or an undead whale. Yeah. That's rotting. Then you better be stinks. able to breathe water. Oh, oh. Uh, do you uh, want to uh. even breathe that water in? Oh. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I created a creature one time for an underwater campaign: zombie sharks. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, that works. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. That was pretty tough. Oof. Ah, oh, that's <laughs> creepy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got the idea from it was a photograph, and it was on social media, but it was actually. Uh, a great white shark in a tank that was left in a tank in an abandoned aquarium somewhere in Australia or something like that. And it was huge. So you got this green glue uh, goo like uh, fluid filled aquarium to the top glass shine through. And you just see this giant silhouette of a great white shark, (laughs) you know, that's, in there you can look it up and that that's what gave me the idea for zombie shark i was just like oh my god <laughs> that didn't work mm-hmm. so speaking of giant whales let's move on why are the players underwater what are they looking for and what are they <clears throat> finding what what makes the depths interesting enough to actually want to risk drowning which is supposedly the worst way you could die uh mm-hmm. I say it's being lit on fire, but that's only my practical knowledge. I didn't actually feel like what it was like. Kicked well, I to mean, death. What? Kicked to death. <laughs> so why are we going down under the water? What are we seeing? What makes it unique? And let's start with David. No, I started with David this time. Yeah. Let's go with Frank last time. 
a uh, little preview of Saturday's scenario. Uh, the party is being <laughs> sent to the coastline uh, to recover a magic item from a shrine that fell into the ocean due to nefarious circumstances. Uh, so their job is to go underwater somehow uh find the ruins of this old shrine temple uh sanctuary uh find the item and get out alive uh so that is the actual premise to saturday's one shot so if you're interested in playing that i haven't decided on level yet but uh do the lungfish do the lungfish yeah <laughs> You know what? They have to roll constitution to see if they can stomach it. <laughs> well, to be fair, they're not supposed to stomach it. Well, and then what if uh, they wait too long and it just takes over and now they have to live underwater with SpongeBob round pants? Oh, I would imagine you have to stay underwater while it's in there. Otherwise, uh, you end up with a dead fish in your lung because it can't process air. It can only process water and fill your lungs with air. But if you take it above ground, it dies and you have a dead thing in your lung. And so you die. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, something with uh, if you leave it in too long, it's kind of like a puffer fish or where the pectoral fins with the spines on it. It will latch itself into your lung and it just, yeah. Then you got to live underwater. Yeah, I like that idea. Lays eggs if it stays Ooh, in there way yeah. too long. Everybody <laughs> loves getting eggs laid in their body. That is right, cool. Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. so, so, yes, for my party, they're going in to get something. Uh, or Atlantis. I mean, you know, who doesn't want to go meet with them? Underwater culture, speak with them, learn about them, and then destroy them. Like uh, the destroy Spaniards. Destroy the glass dome. Yeah. Destroy the... Yeah, perfect. <laughs> what about you, David? Why are your players going underwater? What are they seeing when they get under there? Okay. Um, one of the things... Um, all right, see you uh, society they're more amphibious rather than just submersed um than aquatic uh they are being captured so they have the ability kind of like jason momoa breathe air and water you know um they're being captured uh by Sawagan and taken down as slaves uh for uh the Sawagan uh population uh, that's amassing down below. Uh, the sea elves petition uh, local uh, uh, civilizations and things like that for champions to to help fight for their cause. And you know, they provide armor and stuff like that to fight the fight to fight the swagon. So I think part of that is in Ghost of Salt Marsh. But yeah, that's fine. So. Yeah, we were kind of talking about civilizations. We're talking about lungfish, sea kelp. Uh, one thing we were talking about is potions. Mm -hmm. um, and this is an, uh, an idea, as I'm talking to the audience here, that I put to these guys earlier, which is kind of thinking about these underwater items, both mundane, both magical, how, how they're different in order to give that feel of yeah, no, you're in an entirely different place. Nothing works the same here. So how are you changing the description of something or how something is done? Because let's take potions, for example. If I'm underwater and I need to drink a potion, as soon as I unpop that cork, that potion is gone and replaced with seawater. Uh... <laughs> Uh, our producer oh, came up with the genius <laughs> idea of your uh, barbarian is shoving a glass file into their mouth <laughs> and crunching it open. So, suppositories of greater healing or something like that. I think that kills the lungfish, though, with the glass shards. Yeah, I think it does, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like I said, suppositories of greater healing. <laughs> 
So obviously, <laughs> Frank, I'm writing that down. <laughs> potions, yes. as they are, do not work underwater. So, Ooh. are you purchasing uh, like um, what are those? Um, the tea thing with the little balls in it. What's the ball tea? Tea brewer, tea ball. <laughs> no, no, not the tea ball. The the fancy tea where you have to have a huge straw and you drink boba. Uh, boba tea. Boba. Tea. boba. So okay. you have boba healing. Yeah, there you go. Regular tea, and then you get these little balls, and then you pop them, uh, and then liquid, like a gusher almost, yeah. except it's very thin skinned. What like the old gum with the mouthwash in it? Yeah, yeah, a gusher. Sure. Yeah, pretty that's, much. That's long before Kyle's time, but yeah. A yeah. little bit, yes. Uh, but yeah, no, you pop one of those in your mouth, there's your healing potion right there. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that sounded without the pop filter on there. Probably terrible. Yeah, it uh, didn't sound too bad. So that's one way you might change a potion. What are you changing? Yeah, what are you guys changing to make it seem more alien, more underwater? To say that, you know, this is a completely different place. Things work entirely different here. Uh, let's start with... Mm, let's start with you, David. I'm sorry. You looked away at the wrong yeah, one. It's like, yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying uh, to get <laughs> mundane items. Uh, yeah. yeah, bows and arrows aren't going to work. So uh, maybe some modified crossbows to be like spear guns. Sure. Yeah, you know, something like that would work. No feathers See, on your crossbow bolts. They are just straight yeah. tubes of wood because the feathers would just slow everything down. Pretty much. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of like a modified uh, crossbow. Sure. Things like that. Mm-hmm. Frank, you got a few items? Uh, how about instead of a flying carpet, uh, kelp woven together is your rug of smothering or your... Uh, passage through the waves uh also don't forget mounts uh giant uh-huh. seahorses gotta have those special uh, guarding and uh, saddles yeah, yeah. Uh, if you can uh, deal with the sea elves or sagian or merfolk or whoever the hell has them uh that would expedite your search of a region uh most definitely uh, the armor uh, obviously is going to be composed of shells or shell fragments, uh, and, and coral would be the weapons. So coral, coral, coral. not to be confused with Rick and coral. Uh, but yeah, I, it would have to be that uh, you can eliminate all of your dusts of sneezing and choking and uh, disappearance and all that shit because that ain't gonna work. Uh-uh. Uh, but you know, I could see a nice camouflaged kelp suit, maybe uh, uh-huh. like uh, a vest, like what a leprechaun would wear, made yeah. out of kelp. Yeah, ghillie suits made out of kelp, or a giant shell that you can wear around like Man Fang does uh, on the Margu campaign. Just find or, yourself one of those big shells and wear it. Uh, <clears throat> remember the old movie, the old movie Doctor Doolittle with. Uh, when he went on the sea voyage, it was the giant sea snail, and the whole inside was, you know, like this lux- luxurious submersible that and stuff is like that. An old Doctor Doolittle movie. Yes. Yeah, that is yeah. old. I mean, we're talking made before my time. You know. So. Whoa! They mm-hmm. had talkies back then. They had talkies <laughs> back then. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'm yeah, trying to well, think of the actor who's in it. The hut. You you could use the the palace or the hut mm-hmm. o- only in the form of a giant shell. Now the hut would it be spherical or would it conical? Just be conical. Yeah, okay. be conical. Yeah, that'll work. I see that. Mm-hmm. And it would protect you from the pressure as well mm-hmm. as uh, the temperature. Also camouflage it too. Once you kill its uh, occupant, who had <laughs> who had babies. Ah, <laughs> you got to kill the babies too. Yeah, yeah, you guys always play that card. <laughs> it's a fun card to play. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like, oh, I gotta kill hey, a baby bear. <laughs> kill, kill a family. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so there's that. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Um, how about piracy? Nice. I mean, yeah. it's a subject to broach tonight, piracy. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what did he write? <laughs> I he just, uh, you. I <laughs> did. Oh, yeah, just me. Uh, so, folks, uh, I went ahead and found a spell jammer whale, uh, i.e. A, a ship. Made, uh-huh. out, made to look like a whale. Uh, and he points out, Kyle points out that at some point in time during the stay in the whale, a rock grabs the whale like an eagle in a salmon. Uh, and I'm guessing you're going to be dashed against some rocks. <laughs> drop down or it's and, like you just finally free yourself out of the whale. And it's like, <laughs> well, we're not in the ocean. We're airborne. This looks like a, oh my you know, gosh, it, this it, is a rock nest. We got to get out of here. <laughs> it's like uh, Air Force One where the jaw opens up and you're on the landing deck and it's just all air and yeah. a red light goes off and somebody's yelling, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> I and thought you said this was an underwater one shot. Nice. Your nice. eyeball floats to shore in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Along with whale babies. Just saying. Right. Oh man. And man. So yeah. That's no, definitely but... a high level concept right there. <laughs> <laughs> so I... guys, what levels are you running your underwater one shots if we're making these or what? Yeah, let's go with one shots. We kind of talked about campaigns a little bit. We've talked about options <laughs> of your players can't breathe underwater. Here are some ways to do that both magically and mundanely, muggly, uh, as it were. Nice. But uh, what are we doing for one. one shops? Fourth and above. Got to be fourth mm-hmm. and above. Yeah, uh, fifth is. and above for water I, breathing? I, I, I could do fifth and above, except I did uh, Aquitania, fourth level for Gen Con. Uh, 2020 um and it never it never got to ran although ashley ran it for her co-workers and they had a blast so uh, i always use fourth level characters for conventions because they're strong enough not to die but weak enough not to be a pain in my ass so uh fourth level they were all given amulets uh Mm -hmm. in real life they were also given amulets i had to i had to gamble for them remember yeah. My Disclaimer, my before. ambulance do not allow you to breathe underwater. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> but yeah, you had to gamble for them because that was uh, Triton's crown. Triton's Con crown. That was, a, that was a good one. You did that for that con. Uh, what was it? Was it Hoosier Con? Or? No, that was uh, Gen Con 2020. That was the episode, the lost episode, because an attorney couldn't read. So... <laughs> <laughs> We could never post that one. Because, we could never post it. Uh, I'll say bitchy pants about it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, it was fun. It was underwater. You guys were all fourth level. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were sent in. Uh, they were waiting on a package. Hurricane hit. The ship went down. They had to go underwater to get it. Uh, and mm-hmm. they were fourth level, but they had to gamble to get their device. We had environmental hazards, man. We had a whole freaking submerged ship coming after us. <laughs> yeah. Now, the other problem with going high level, you know, oh, we're going to do high level. The wizard will be able to do it. You kill that wizard, everybody dies. <laughs> Pretty much. Perfect. Airy water is gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of great things you can do. I, I really do like underwater campaigns in our scenarios. I mean, I think they're great. I mean, I, I like anything aquatic. And all that. I even wrote kind of a piracy thing that transitioned from the surface to under the water. So I wrote yeah. something like that a while ago. Yeah. And I mean, considering how much of the world is covered in water, there is so much i can't imagine your dog just wearing a scuba suit that seems <laughs> but that, whatever uh i mean so much of the world is covered with water and one of the most uh, uh funny things i've heard not funny things haha but funny things is like oh yeah 
is that you have the ship sailing across it, but no one ever actually thinks about, you know, the nations and the worlds underneath the waves. And it's a lot of untapped potential. If you're thinking of how that's, that's like a plane flying, you know, above us, except that everyone can fly. (laughs) There's a movie that, you know, we all know (laughs) that got panned because it was so bad. Waterworld. They're running that as a scenario. You know, the world is covered in water. You know, so. But now we have actual beings sentient who live underwater who, yeah, just every once in a while come up, yeah, we'll make a deal with you or, yeah, you're not allowed to actually uh, sail in this zone. This is a no- sailing zone Mm -hmm. get out of here pretty much yeah well to be fair uh the margu campaign uh may end up underwater at some point (laughs) they're gonna (laughs) be pissing off everybody on they are gonna gonna end up underwater didn't they piss off an water breathing yep they killed the abolith they pissed off the sea deity uh but yeah uh do a captain nemo scenario where he's tired of all the whaling vessels and the industrial shipping and by god he's going to clean up the oceans by ramming them i was uh on i'll be kirk uh, douglas (laughs) my home campaign my character was on a ship and all the magic items that my uh character had especially one that was legendary yeah caught the attention of a markov Ooh, Those things are badass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I teleported the fuck out of there with my, with my um, stuff. So now, growing up in uh, AD and D, uh, Vault of the not Vault of the Vault of Drow. It was a Shrine of Koatoa. Not exactly completely underwater, but enough so that if you went into the wrong cave, you were screwed. Uh, so uh, Gary did a nice job of that one. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, we are starting to get long here, so real quick, you can follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to hit us up on Twitter, you can do that, or talk to us about D and D. Maybe share some of your underwater scenarios. You can hit us up there. If you want to join in the one shot this Saturday, hit us up. Twitter again, Gmail. Oh my goodness, M Hobo Inc at Gmail dot com. If you want to listen to us instead of looking at our faces, feel free to follow the links outside and it'll take you to an awesome place. If you want to buy some really cool, awesome swag, I'm not going to recommend the cred. Uh, no, I am. I am. The cred totally swag is. is the best stuff you can get. It's soft and it looks cool. Much cooler than uh, anything else. I think um, it's on sale till midnight, too. Oh, on sale. Yeah, because I, I, I actually, actually think they worthless. extended it to like 12 bucks for teas. Ooh. So, okay. I know what I'm going to buy here. Yeah, honey, you are <laughs> slash RPG swag. There you go. Go now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, if we'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Pirate Dog Dice. No. Yes, you're. No, yes, you're right. you're right. I was about mm-hmm. to say Dirty Dog Dice, and I was like, wait, no, that's an old thing. Deputy Dog Grace. Pirate dog dice for one. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to show it off again because I love it. Speaking of underwaterness, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, look at that. And hey, what's the dice part, on? <laughs> it's on a one, just like exactly. <laughs> the best part about it is I just actually just let it sit there, but because of the odd thing, it always sits at an odd angle and it's just offsetting enough to make me think of, you know, Cthulhu. And just how off kilter everything is as I knock everything over. Oh, <laughs> Harry, I broke it. <laughs> it's too heavy. <laughs> anyway, uh, pirate dog dice for when you're rolling like crap, pirate dog dice, they roll better, but also randomly. I don't I think know. That's how uh, dice work. If so. you're DM, get the DM dice. They roll nicer. If you're a player, get the players only dice. Or just say, hey, I'm a player, and then we'll get you the one with all the ones on it. Yeah. Uh, also, our sponsors, if your game stinks, Adventure Sense from Oddfish Games are the way to go. 
because you can go either direction. You can make it stink worse, or you can make it smell like an old library, which may be stink worse for some people. Uh, that wow. Kickstarter RPG with your cat that is coming up. The Shine Project for when you're writing a story and you just need to remember to ask yourself certain questions that you didn't even think of. You know, there's what you know, there's what you don't know you don't know, and something like that. I screwed that up. So clearly, I need to know that thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You got you got to <laughs> write much more better. Write much more better. -er. Yeah. There you go. That's a better. I, I, uh, also hit them up. Gen Con, that's coming up soon. Do some work for them. You can get some cool swag, or you can earn the half Benjamins or the quarter Benjamins. I don't know how much they'll pay you, so just say that Kyle from Murder Hobo said that you would get paid a thousand dollars per bag you sell. <laughs> they will honor it because. Because <laughs> you're full of crap. Because <laughs> I'm full of the uh, uh, putrid sewers that I inhaled earlier, and I haven't called the lawyers yet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I can't because I signed a contract. So... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Guys, that is it. Uh, again, cacophony on Thursday. One shot underwater on Saturday, what it sounds like. Uh, hopefully Probably. it's a whale, but if not, you're going into a temple and it's going to be fantastic. As you, you can find the temple, fish. you got to find the temple first. Yeah, there's that three years. We did it three years. We didn't talk about currents being a pitfall, and that's always yeah, there you go because you get start swim ahead, and all of a sudden you're 50 feet that way, and you're out of the fight forever. Giant okay, water funnel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't talk about it. All right, everybody, wave to the camera. Say good night. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, that was a little wet there, Frank. <laughs>